So you grew up Catholic and you've spoken about your mom and um, her commitment to the faith, both raising you in the faith and even today as a catechist. Um, when did the faith become yours? When did you sort of claim it as something other than, okay, I grew up Catholic. When was the, was there a moment where you felt like, okay, it's mine now? Yeah. So that question is going to lead us down a, a little bit of a path. I was born and raised Catholic and up until my sophomore year of college, if people would have said like, what do you believe? I would have said, well, I'm Catholic. I go to mass every single Sunday and I say an hour father and a Hail Mary and a glory be every night before I go to bed. But I was raised in the church during a period and a time and an era where catechesis wasn't very strong. And what we were taught often didn't get transmitted really, really well. And I really didn't have a relationship with God, I would say. So my sophomore year in college, uh, I met a whole group of non-denominational Christians who were on fire with the faith and they started asking me questions and I had no answers. And I eventually got invited to a revival on campus, which I honestly didn't know what that word even meant. I thought that like, maybe they were going to bring somebody back from the dead or it was, I really had no idea what a revival was. And it was a bunch of Christians. They had their Bibles and they sang songs. And uh, the next thing I felt and experienced as I entered into that uh, is I felt an overwhelming presence of God. I felt tremendously loved. And it was at that moment that I actually heard God say to me, John, be a priest. And my mind is just like, is just turning over and over and over, like be a priest and God loves me. And I walked out of the room that night and a young girl came up to me and she said, Jonathan, is you, have you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior? I just looked at her and I said, uh, I'm Catholic. I don't think we do that. And then she said, uh, John, do you know who Jesus is? And I said, I say in Our Father, Hail Mary and Glory be, every night before I go to bed, I think I'm good. I'll never forget it, but she looked directly in the, eye to eye and she just says, Jonathan, you have no idea who God is. She turned around and she walked away. And I remember just standing there, I was, I was on a basketball court. I remember just standing there being like, I have no idea what just happened in my life, but all I know is it was real. So I went back to my dorm room and I lived with four other college athletes and I knew I couldn't say anything to them about this experience. I would have been laughed at or just too hard to explain. So I went to bed that night and I didn't sleep. I remember just tossing and turning and, but I woke up that next morning. And I was like, I have to make a decision. So I said, okay, God, I know that you are real and I need to learn who you are. I need to discover who you are. And this priesthood thing, no way, like just suppressed it, get rid of it. And so in the next few weeks, my life changed radically. Within two weeks, I had joined uh, a men's Bible study, uh, a men's prayer group, and I was going to praise and worship on Thursday nights. And so powerful. I met like genuine men that wanted to grow in fraternity and wanted to grow in virtue. I met a lot of young adults who just experienced life in a way that I had never seen before. All at the same time, I struggled with like, but what does it mean to be Catholic? And I just kind of just kept pushing that away as well. Eventually at the end of that semester, there are many things I was, I'd been dating a young lady that I really thought I was going to marry. And, uh, but I couldn't get rid of this idea of the priesthood and this newfound love that I had for Jesus and accepting him as my personal Lord and savior and praise and worship music. And the only thing that I could figure out in my sophomore mind, uh, in college was the fact that God wanted me to become a priest so that I could convert Catholics to accept Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and savior. So I actually said, I'm going to be all in. So I met with my parish priest who I had never talked to in my life. Uh, and with a three week turnaround, uh, I had affiliated with the Archdiocese of Annapolis to become uh, a seminarian and was enrolled into college seminary in Minnesota at St. John Vianney Seminary. And at the time I had never prayed a rosary. I had never heard that Jesus Christ was truly present in the blessed sacrament. Uh, and I was pro-choice. And I really didn't know what a priest was besides the fact that like priests were supposed to help people love Jesus. I didn't love Jesus from my experience of being a Catholic. So it just set me on fire with this desire to bring that conversion renewal to the church. 
And quickly I learned, of course, after entering seminary that I had a lot to learn. And from that, I did a lot of study. And that then led me to realizing the beauty of the Catholic faith. And I always like to say my sophomore year in college, I fell in love with Jesus. And when I entered into seminary, my junior year of college, I fell in love with this church. And that love that I had to convert Catholics, and that desire and that passion that was placed in my heart, it's the same passion and the desire that I have today. So many of our Catholic brothers and sisters are asleep in their faith. And God, I believe, is inviting every single one of them to have a reawakening, to have an opening, to, to surrender their, their lives and to realize the riches and the treasures that exist within the church that many of them, like myself, had just never really been introduced to. Or they were, but it didn't take effect. And so my priesthood really has been a beautiful journey of trying to help people to realize that yes, Jesus is real, and yes, he loves you, and he has a church, and that church is beautiful. What do the girls say? Uh, so yeah, so I caused a fight and broke up with her. And um, it was really hard. I'm, it, it was very, very hard because I really did love her and cared for her very, very much so. And uh, it was a lot of tears. But uh, in the end, in the battle of God or the girl, I think God should always win. And he did. And I'm thankful for that. Why were you pro-choice? I was actually pro-choice because of my girlfriend. We had, I remember having the conversation one night with her, somehow the, to the, t the topic came up from current events of what was happening in the news and the media. I remember turning to her one night and being like, well, what do you think about abortion? Which is, side note, how I think a lot of young people get formed on social issues is they just ask a friend. I can honestly say that I never once remember hearing anything in any of my CCD classes about abortion. I never once hear anything from the pulpit, from a pastor or for a priest. And I remember her just looking at me and she said, there's no way that I would spend so much money on college and have all these dreams and allow a child to take that away from me. Mm. And so I remember just being like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. That makes so much sense. And that was my stance. So you've been on this journey. Uh, how does God amaze you today? God amazes me today. Uh, personally, in the fact that he, he, he hasn't given up on me. He, he, keeps, he keeps me alive. He keeps grace alive. He keeps... Uh, my joy alive. But he amazes me today in that he keeps placing people in my lives, in, in my life, who I have the honor and the opportunity to see their lives change. Whether it be a young person in our youth ministry program, uh, or just a few days ago, uh, a young adult brought her great aunt to the parish and her great aunt just got diagnosed with terminal cancer. She most likely has a month to live and her great aunt wants to be baptized before she dies. And you see just this beauty of the hunger that exists and it's beautiful. 